Hey, today we're going to look at some examples of images created with flash gels. And I'm going to talk about how I created these effects and give you some tips on using flash gels in your photography. Hey, I hope you're having a great day. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, um, this first image here, uh, this is probably the first time I really like, sort of seriously took on using flash gels for effect. Uh, and this was actually uh, not using speed lights uh, and you know like these days I pretty much just use speed lights for everything but this was um, using alien bees and for alien bees you know it's a bigger light so you need a bigger uh, gel to go on those lights so I bought those this pack of big gels um, and uh, before we actually did this uh, the shoot that that this picture came out of I, I experimented a lot with them first. Uh, I didn't, you know, I, I, I didn't want to experiment with, with, you know, and waste anyone's time. So I just kind of just did this on my own and just shot those uh, uh, flashes off uh, onto white walls and my gray seamless and a black seamless. And I just kind of wanted to get a feel for uh, how to use those gels and how to sort of get effects from those gels, uh, like I said, without wasting other people's time in the process. Um, so one of the things I learned about uh, these gels when I first started experimenting with them, uh, you know, like I said, against those different colored surfaces in a room, uh, was that more light was not necessarily going to give you more color. Lots of times, and to my surprise, I found out that uh, a less intense flash would often give you sort of a deeper uh, rendition of color, especially against um, darker backgrounds, darker surfaces, darker walls, and things like that. Now just to let you know what's going on in this image, uh, the background is actually a blue gift wrapping. It's just a shiny blue gift wrap. Uh, and I just uh, taped that up against the wall. That was going to be my background. Uh, I had uh, on the uh, on camera left, as you can see, uh, you've got a white light. Uh, you can see that in the reflection of the hair. And of course, there's more of a natural uh, color on the model's face there. Uh, and that's a white light on camera left uh, modified with an umbrella which is something that I've just been doing ever since I started uh, using a shoot through umbrella for um, just giving me sort of a, a softer light than just straight flash again this was all done with a couple of alien bees that I had now the, that light that you see there that's a red light that is another alien bees unit with a red gel on it and um, that light is on camera right uh, pushed towards the back and uh, directed back towards the model. I just wanted to show you that, um, you know, with this image, this is a music performance shot. It's stage lighting. This is nothing that I set up. It just showed up, you know, uh, it's regular stage lighting. And uh, w with this example, I'm trying to show you that, you you know, gels are used, uh, you know, in theater and stage lighting. It's probably pretty obvious you can use gels over constant lights, hot lights. Uh, and here you can see that the cigarette smoke uh, on stage adds a little cool atmosphere to that. And in this shot, uh, there's no gel used at all. What she's, uh, what the model's lying down on is a black uh, seamless. So the seamless is rolled out all the way onto the floor and she's lying on the floor. You can't see the backside of the seamless because the light is pretty focused. It's, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm using a grid here to sort of focus that light onto the model. And I've got a blue cast here and the black surface actually looks kind of blue. This just goes to show you, uh, you don't always need a gel. I'm going to show you some more examples of that. Uh, you don't always need a gel to get gel-like effects. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, one example. I've got uh, this photo here. It's just a regular, there's no gels used in this photo. And this is sort of a screenshot uh, from Photoshop where I'm using the um, lighting effects filter. Uh, and, and this is something that just allows you to throw virtual lighting up into a picture and uh, it can come out looking pretty convincing. Uh, here's uh, another example of that. Uh, this is Molly in a shot that uh, actually no gels are used uh, with the photo here on the left. And it's the same exact setup as the one on the right, except that I'm using that Photoshop lighting effects uh, filter in there. and. Uh, it's very convincing. I mean, you can see that that red spot, uh, you know, it hits that. It blends with the white, uh, the highlights in the hair there on the left side, and it makes them look red. So it makes it, it, makes it look like you've, you're using a gel on that side, and it's 
coloring not only the background but also the model's hair. Uh, you've got a blue section of that lighting effects filter in there and you have a yellow one too. And then this white light over here uh, on the one side is actually in the shot. That's actually part of the real photograph. All right, so real quick, we're going to run through a sequence of shots that I did where I was experimenting with red and uh, blue gels over speed lights. And uh, just want to show you how easy it is uh, just to give you a quick um, view of how this works. Here's a speed light. I'm using these uh, Roscoe gel filters and you can see, let's see where I have the blue and red gels here. And it's just a simple matter of placing, placing that over the speed light like this. I'm doing it kind of sloppy here, but you can, you get the idea. It's really nothing much to that. And that's what I used over here in this uh, image on camera right, pointed towards the model. And I used uh, a blue, uh, purplish one on another speed light over here. That was sort of a backlight, uh, rim light thing over on camera left. Now I'm not using any modifiers, uh, just experimenting with straight flash. Uh, and I can't really tell you what the settings were. I can tell you what the camera settings were. Let me just find that real quick. Yeah, those camera settings were ISO 800. I'm using a 50 millimeter lens. Uh, we've got this at F8 and 1 two fiftieth of a second, which is my cameras. I'm using a 7D, so that's my camera's uh, flash sync. One other thing about those settings, uh, as far as the camera settings go, I gave you those, but I really can't tell you what the flash settings were because those are going to change, um, you know, with the, the colored gels that you're using. So gels of different colors are lots of times of different densities. So, you know, you let's say that you have your light set at a certain power setting. Uh, you're using one color and then you switch to another color, you you probably have to change that power setting if the colors are really different. For this set, I you know, it was it's really just a matter of setting the setting the lights up, trying something out, and if one looked a little bit too intense, like in this case, if the the red I think at first was looking a little too intense where it wasn't even looking so much red anymore. Uh, I just dialed that light down a little bit. So let's just run through these photos real quick. All right, so starting here, you know, I'm asking the model just to play out different situations. Now, one quick tip here, uh, I showed the model, you know, what the pictures would look like. Uh, I showed her the preview monitor on the back of the camera. Uh, I took some test shots. I showed her what it uh, would look like. So she, she can sort of get a sense of her, you know, environment in the photo. Uh, so she could sort of play to that. So I showed her that so she could kind of get a sense for, you know, you know, it looks kind of dark and psychedelic. And so we kind of played off of that. So yeah, so it can really help to sort of clue your model into what her photo environment looks like as opposed to what it looks like there in the studio. So here I'm uh, asking her just to act out sort of uh, emotions or sort of like, like um, uh, fantasy scenes. And uh, I don't really know what the, the thing was here. It was sort of like, okay, look like you're walking around on an alien planet and you're looking tentative. And uh, let's see, we go on to the next shot and it was you know the direction is kind of okay and you just heard something off in the distance and you know you're still exploring this sort of alien environment um, but you see here uh, how I'm sort of bringing that flash in the background I'm sort of bringing that into the shot to sort of play with the flare and I kind of just kept going with that to the point where I wanted to you know actually include that uh, that flash in the scene itself and then we got some cool nice flare here towards the bottom i actually got that idea from this shot right here and this is from that same shoot with molly that you saw earlier i decided to include that uh, uh, flash in the background as part of the shot because i wanted it to look kind of studio like you know i mean the whole uh, this concept was the studio 54 kind of feel. Uh, that was the 1979 theme shoot. So that's a pretty interesting video you might want to check out. But this is one of the shots from it and uh, use that light in the background for effect. So kind of did the same thing here and played off of that. And we're still experimenting with that. And then I said, well, why don't you try sort of a, like a Wonder Woman effect? And uh, just to let you know, these these images can be 
um, you know you can you can play with the exposure you can uh, you know colors can be dialed up they can be dialed down you can uh, you know, dial that blue in to be a little deeper a little lighter I mean you can just mess with all of the colors uh, even you know just in Lightroom uh, lots of stuff you can do you can even get uh, you know the skin tones to look a little more natural uh, so there's lots of stuff you can do in post with those colors all right, so we're just about finished here. We kind of got into a superhero mode. I just said strike some poses like a superhero. And then we finished up with sort of, a, you know, including that flash in the background. And I don't know what this is, like a like a naked Power Ranger? I, I'm not sure exactly, but it looks kind of cool. Uh, I'm not really sure what I want to do with this. Probably post it up in the blog somewhere because I can't show everything here on YouTube. Definitely have to censor some of these as usual when I'm showing anything with nudity in it. You can see here where I might want to clone out the light stand apparatus in this shot. But I left it in here because I haven't really done anything with these photos yet. You're kind of seeing them here first before I really show them to anyone else. Anyway, so that's a quick rundown of what I've been doing with flash and gels. And I've got some other videos where I explain how to use flash and gels with backgrounds so you can kind of do uh, background color effects with those. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and click subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment too. I'd love to hear your comments or your questions. Uh, and I, that's about it for today. I'll see you next time.